You know, every once in a while, I like to do a little feature for people who are maybe a little less fortunate than the rest of us. For example, pumpkin carving is a lot of fun, but what if you're one of those guys who's not allowed to have sharp objects? <laughs> well, here's what you do. First, I take this glue stick, see? Then I just draw a scary face right onto the pumpkin. No harm there, just keep the glue away from your face and don't inhale. There we go. Okay, now you just... Uh, Empty a few shotgun shells to make a harmless little pile of gunpowder. <laughs> now all you do is roll old pumpkin head face down into the gunpowder, and you'll find it only sticks where you put the glue. Okay. Now all that's left to do is the carving. You may not want to stand too close for this part, unless you're real tired of your facial hair. <laughs> People dropped by the lodge this week. I was kind of hoping they may stay over a night or two, but they were just stopping to ask for directions to the new provincial park up by Port Asbestos. So they're jammed to the eyeballs. We got nobody. <laughs> Why, it's frustrating, you know, when the government uses your own money to compete with you. <laughs> Makes me feel a lot better about not paying my taxes, I'll tell you. Uncle Red? Yeah. Quick question. Yeah, I got a question. What's the exact wording on your birth certificate? Mail, what is it on yours? <laughs> no, I mean, well, is, it, is this how you, you know, you spell your full name? Like that? I don't know, I've never written it. <laughs> what is that anyway, Harold? This? Oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. Just a little crazy idea I had. It's nothing. Oh, did you just mind signing the bottom? This isn't like an application to turn the lodge into a chess club or something, is it? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Provincial Park. <laughs> yeah. The one in Port Asbestos is working so well, the government's looking to open one in our area, maybe. Really? Well, we'd be perfect as a provincial park, Harold. Huh? I mean, we're in a province, and we got places to park. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they may want to make a few changes, you know, like tear down the lodge and run the lake water through a sewage treatment facility, but that's about all, I think. Tear down the lodge, Harold. <laughs> I'm not letting them do anything to the lodge. They've allocated $15 million for the project. Well, go, I go, know. Go, go, go. Today's winner will receive this coupon for a free wash, wax, buff, shine, and lube job from the Possum Lake Fitness Club. <laughs> okay, Mr. Green, uh, cover your ears. You got 30 seconds to get down to say this word. App. <laughs> App. Yeah, okay. okay. Right. And go. All right, Don, this, this is easy. Okay. If, if you don't understand what somebody is saying, you tell them to speak. English. <laughs> okay, okay. When you're playing baseball, eh? Somebody will yell, you're... Out. No, no, I mean, this is your turn at bat, eh? So what do your teammates say? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Dalton, the very first thing you did this morning was to get... Yelled at by Anne Marie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but after that, you got... The heck out of the house. <laughs> Go another way with it. What's the opposite of being down? Being single. <laughs> All right, you're almost out of time, Mr. Green. Okay, you hear that, Dalton? Yep. Time's almost, almost gone. Time's almost gone, right? Hurry up! Come on! Yeah. Welcome to the expert portion of the show. This is where we address those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. Yes, you do, because that's for them. <laughs> okay, um, today's letter goes as follows. Dear experts. La, la, la. Dear experts, now that I'm older, I've noticed that certain parts of my body don't function as well as they used to. Oh, for... <laughs> my wife says there's no shame in seeking medical assistance, but I want your advice. Should I get a hearing aid? Seinfeld. 
It's okay, he just wants to get a hearing aid. Does that help? <laughs> His ears. <laughs> all right, yeah, sure. You know, you can you can get a, you can get a hearing aid if you want to, but if you're a middle-aged guy, you know, like how much are you really missing? You know what I mean? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, like at our age, nobody comes up and says stuff like, "Wow, nice abs." You know, or, Where'd you learn to play guitar like that? Or uh, what do you think about anything? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with Red. I think I, I recommend something called selective hearing. Yeah, you only hear what you want to hear. Oh, that's, that, that's, that's a great theory. That's a terrible theory. Thanks, Red. <laughs> Phil, Phil, get a hearing aid. It's important to communicate your emotions and thoughts to your loved ones. You gotta stay in the loop. That's what the hangman used to say. <laughs> Okay, look, I know you're both just kidding around, you know, but I do hope you get hearing aids if the time comes. Well, I think, you know, if my hearing goes, I would, I may get a hearing aid, but Harold, if you go, I will definitely get one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there have been a lot of great inventions over the last hundred years. Splitting of the atom, polio vaccine, but the greatest one has to be the drive through restaurant, eh? Man, if I could have told my great-grandfather that the day would come where they could stuff a hot meal into a paper bag and toss it through your car window, he'd just shake his head. But I'm thinking it's maybe time to take her to the next level, eh? Instead of a drive through restaurant where you have to go to where the food is, which can be humiliating if you're, say, on foot or worse still, riding a bicycle, I suggest a drive to restaurant where the food actually drives to where you are. And I'm not just talking about plain old delivery where all you get is soggy fries and lukewarm attitude. I mean an actual kitchen on wheels. It's a million dollar idea that you can make out of a $40 car. Now, since we're talking takeout, we gotta start by taking out a few things, like these seats. Now, if you end up using a luxury vehicle with the heat and cushions, you might think about keeping them. Make great bun warmers. Okay, now that the seats are gone, the only other thing I have to lose is the roof. If you don't count my credibility, and I'm sure you don't. Okay, I just gotta get this out of the wind here. Okay. Not quite sure what, what happened there. I must have I must have blacked out. Oh, the roof is missing. Oh, there it is. Okay, now the next step is to install our grill here. It only makes sense to be cooking our burgers on a barbecue, but we're gonna actually tie it into the fuel line of the car. I'm not gonna need this propane tank. Look, Nancy. Okay, the barbecue's gonna take care of the burgers and hot dogs, but for the french fries, I need something that'll hold a lot more grease. And I don't mean Harold's comb. <laughs> How about the tank from an old oil furnace, huh? And the beauty of these babies is the longer she's been there, the easier it is to detach. <laughs> okay, now, for your french fries, you really want to have those pre-cut before you hit the road. You could slice them by hand, but for a job this big, I prefer something a little faster. Like, say, a wood chipper. for our prep station. And while you're at it, why not fill the car radiator with hot coffee and then hook it up to a tap mounted right here on the dashboard, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I think I may have just answered my own question there. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a hungry town to feed. You know, most 
most men are a little vague about when exactly middle age begins. Got nothing to do with your chronological age. Doesn't matter if your hair has gone gray, gone white, or gone AWOL. <laughs> you have officially arrived at midlife when the most important aspect of any activity is comfort. <laughs> Excitement, adventure, even finances all take a back seat to comfort. You don't care about physical fitness. You want heating and air conditioning. <laughs> you want padding on your furniture, on your paycheck, on your own butt. <laughs> Even your love life is affected. Forget passion. You're ready to be in a comfortable relationship. You know, where nobody yells at anybody, where nothing changes, and nine times out of ten, you fall asleep before your wife does. <laughs> your wild oats have turned into wild oat bran. <laughs> And as midlife progresses, you may eventually get to the point where you're even comfortable with yourself. Now, some people call that giving up. I call it true success. <laughs> if you can stand in front of a mirror, a wife, or a banker, and say, hey, this is as good as I get, that's got to be a comforting thought. For you, not for them. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Chinese Kung Pao Chicken with Peanuts. Mexican Chili Crust Quiche with Corazo Sausage. Indian Bengali Red Doll Curry. Moroccan Noodles with Cumin. Vietnamese Pepper Casserole. Turkish Eggplant Goulash with Curded Goat Cheese. Argentinian Marinated Aardvark. And more. If this is what you're eating, we need to take a meeting. <laughs> We heard back from the government on our provincial park application. They're going to send an inspector in three days to have a look at the place. Actually, the whole town is, is pretty darn supportive. As soon as they find that we may tear the lodge down, boy, they're all for it. Hey, Red, you wanted to see us? Yeah, yeah, I need you to go out there and just clean up the property around the lodge before the inspector gets here. All right, Coy, we'll just throw all the junk in the lake then. No. Don't, don't throw all of it in because as the water gets up too high, the boats will sink. Right, okay. What, what is uh, these inspectors uh, going to look at? I mean, uh, will they be inspecting our persons? I, I don't know. I don't, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, uh, what about uh, those, like, those holes that look like something has just been buried recently? <laughs> I'm just asking. It's not a scavenger hunt, Mike. Okay, they're going to look at the buildings, the property, and the lake. Okay, so where yeah, you come, go? Come on, Mike. Come on. Where you go? Okay. Uh, um, uh, will, will they, uh, will they be uh, uh, checking the vehicles? Well, they may. <laughs> If you got something in your vehicle, maybe you should just stash it somewhere for a while. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, great, great. I put it in the back of your van. <laughs> Uncle Graham, we got a bit of a recall. What? Yeah, the guy from the government says the only proof place is where families go, and this is, you know, a bit of a men's lodge. Okay, all right, okay, here's what we do. Okay, 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 okay. The, town, okay. the town is behind us, yes, okay? Yes. Okay, so you tell all the women and the children yes. to be here on inspection day, okay? You're okay with that? Yeah, just tell them not to touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> they won't want to touch anything, don't worry. <laughs> Don't and the guys are putting on a charity car wash deal there, and uh, my car was, uh, yeah, it wasn't really filthy. It had a little dust on her, and I thought, might as well support a local charity. And I like they never set the price on these, so you just, whatever you give them, they're usually thankful to get. I, I figured a, a loony would probably be grateful for that. And then uh, Dalton, said, Dalton calls everybody off, saying, apparently, I didn't, the loony didn't qualify for the full treatment, and uh, that's apparently all I, apparently all I got. So. So I figure I better take her up a notch or two, and uh, this, this would be my annual giving here. That Canadian twenty, it's about a American one or two, I believe. And so away they go, and uh, Walter's soaping her up, and Winston's got the vacuum cleaner, and yeah, there was some stuff in there. Just a, a little just gonna fill that baby up pretty fast, I think. And uh, just a lot of stuff. I haven't really cleaned the car out as often as I should. Oh, there's okay. We need a little more water pressure. So Dalton's saying to me, would I? Well, then I, w I had never actually seen the, the type of valve they were using. I wasn't, no, I was expecting to, anyway, I just pulled her back, and there's a lot of pressure in there. And, uh, and then, unfortunately, the handle come right off, and now the hose is, and now the hose can, da can dance on it. It starts banging on the door. I Winston thinks somebody's knocking for him. Uh, so anyway, he's getting the inside of her, and the vacuum cleaner's really taking, it's getting a little bit bigger there, I know. It's just, 
taking out a fair bit of stuff, and Walter's got her hose. Now it's time to do the rinsing, so Dalton names the hose. Something went wrong with the nozzle. She's uh, shooting at a kind of a 90 degree to the, to the right there, and uh, kind of like the Alliance Party, and uh, so then Walter gets the idea. If he stands here, now if Dalton names at him, then it'll go sideways, and it'll rinse off the car, and Dalton's hesitant to do it, but, you know, Walter, Walter's insisting. He finally understands it, so, but apparently it didn't. Whatever it was, it, did, uh, it cleared itself out, so later that day, uh, Winston pretty much had her full, but by now the vacuum cleaning, we're really, stra uh, really straining the limits of that particular unit. Uh, she's getting to be a real good size. And I figured I just, I'd had enough. Uh, and so I thought I would just rinse off, rinse off the car on my own. And while I was rinsing off the car, there's always time for a little bit of fun. <laughs> oh, that's a, oh, I love hoses, yeah. So I got the soap locker there. And oh, I said, thank you very much. That's 20 bucks worth as far as I'm concerned. I'm a happy man. I'm just gonna just get Winston out of there. Winston, just clear out. Out you go, where you go, where you go, where you go. Oh boy, that babies. I didn't realize that the door slam would Okay, didn't gain that much, did I? Man, coffee all over me. And you know why? Because of the coffee cup holder. Adapt to the irregularities in my driving pattern, so every time I swerve, I'm I'm hanging ten in a wave of caffeine. Now I suppose I could wait until the automotive engineers come up with a solution, but you can probably tell by looking at me that I don't have that kind of patience or time. So instead, allow me to present the red green dynamic gimbal mounted spill proof coffee cup holder. It's a simple design, really. I just attached a bicycle pedal to the steering wheel. That makes a flexible mount. The cup holder itself is the role of the handyman's secret weapon. And then the counterweight for the unit is a small trophy that I won at a yard sale for being the first one to offer them a quarter. <laughs> now, no matter which way I turn the wheel, the cup stays level. Is that brilliant or what? <laughs> you know, sometimes I think I'm just wasting my time here. Well, I'm wasting somebody's time. Call the doctor if you're not feeling well. Call the plastic surgeon if your face just fell. Call Quasimodo when you want to ring your bell. But call Rothschild Sewage if there's a horrible, mind-numbing smell. Well, our hopes of turning Possum Lodge into a provincial park had a bit of a setback. The inspector shows up today, two days early. All the women are at work and all the kids are in school. So all we got is men here. That's not going to work. Luckily, we got the imagination to come up with an emergency plan. <laughs> so, uh, how'd that go? Oh, fine. Well, what did he say? Not much. Yes, Harold out. What? Yeah! Tonight for dinner and a movie. You weren't leading them on, I hope, Harold. You want the contract, don't you? What am I gonna do, Uncle Red? What if he gets fresh with me? Okay, you guys wait right here, okay? I got an idea. You're not upset that he asked me out, are you? No. <laughs> not at all. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. He is kind of cute in a rugged way, you know? You know, he's not my type. Really? Yeah, I am guessing Harry back. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that can't be... Okay, 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 okay. Oh, Harold, Harold, I got it all figured out, okay? Yes? You are still gonna go on the date, oh. all right, okay? But you're gonna take your son. Huh? My son. There you go. <laughs> there he is, you guys, okay? 
So away you go. Okay. And have a good time, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, can I play video games at the restaurant? Well, we'll see. Don't slouch. I'm not. Don't slouch. Ow. Don't slouch. Ow. Just get in the car. I hate you. Get in the car. I hate you. Get in the car. Meeting time, Red. Yeah, you go ahead, uh, Dalton. <laughs> okay, uh, my wife is watching, and I really hope you're not. Um, got a bit of a surprise for you. Harold is finally going out on a date. That's got to be good news, right? <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Haroldine and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Sit down, everybody, sit down. Sit down. All right. Quando omni flancus moritati. Sit down. All right, man, bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. Wow. Did we get the provincial park? No. And I'm through with men. You get his number? I got his wallet.